Welcome back to Sunstar Games, the place to find new strategy games, and today we're gonna play a really, really cool that game. This is a scary game. We're gonna be playing as a group of divers moving underwater after a submarine crashed and fighting monsters. Or, in the words of gamers, it's a turn-based combat RPG with some roguelike elements. Let's start a brand new game. What I'm playing here is a demo that will be available during the Steam Game Festival in October. It starts on October 7. Now, in the demo, we have only a story mode, but there is also going to be an endless mode, which is kind of like a roguelike mode. So if you want to do roguelike, you can do that too. The coordinates brought us to an uncharted peak. A great mountain rising from the lightless depths. Shrouded in mystery. We thought we'd prepared for everything. that eye staring at us. What's this gonna do to us? Find out. I'm so excited for this game. This game was published by Slytherin, who, as you might have noticed, I quite like their game, so I'm very, very excited. After the fall. How did I get here? Well, a submarine crashed and now you're here all alone. Who's that voice in my head? <laughs> the voice comes for free, don't need to worry about it. Alright, so we've got our diver over here. We've got Ensign Freeman. His name is Jim Freeman. But we're gonna call him Ensign Vass after one of my patrons. Now what we've got here is action points, which are these things here on the left top. If you're moving, you can take a co you can consist of multiple smaller movement unless you separate them by a main action. If you move and then you do a main action, then you lost all the ref leftover movement that it would have been given in that action. This blue thing over here, here is air. Because we're underwater, we have limited amount of air. There are going to be air vents later on that we can use to increase the air, but not right now. Let me investigate this object. Ensign Vass swears under his breath, a corpse. Of all the caves in the ocean, there's a corpse in this one. That can be a good omen. Though the uniform is old and the years have taken their toll, it is clear that the deceased sailor was of an extremely high rank, not a man who would be unceremoniously buried at sea under normal circumstances. Mutiny, perhaps? Or battle? There are no answers here. All Vass knows is that he would rather avoid suffering whatever gruesome fate claimed the man. Lowering his head in respect for a fellow sailor, he moves on. May you rest in peace. Alright, so we're gonna move over here to the right. Now, this on the left is Sanity. This is pretty important because some of the enemy monsters, they can what they can do is they can lower your sanity and if you get insane, you're going to attack your own friends. I think the circus is from the Salem. I should check it out. Right, let's check it out. We find a spear gun. So spear gun is pretty great because we can use it to attack from a distance. Otherwise the only other weapon we have is this diver's knife and for that you need to be right next to the enemy. So we're gonna drag it here into our inventory which means we're gonna be able to use it. And let's uh, keep moving because there's nothing else there. Now, if you use up all your movement points, uh, your end of turn will go automatically, otherwise you can click here if you want to end your turn early. Usually it's not beneficial, so the game will warn you like, hey, you sure you want to do this? 
Oh, that's a big jellyfish. Maybe I can get around it somehow. Well, the thing is, it can't shoot at you, man, so you might want to use a spear gun. Gee, we can because we've got no action points, so we are going to kind of try to run away a little bit. And what I found in this game is that it's often a good idea to not fight enemies if you don't need to. Because um, the only benefit if you kill an enemy is that you can investigate them and you gain something called a clue, which will allow you to upgrade your crew later on. But if you kill multiple enemies of the same type, you only get the clues for like the first one, so then it's not beneficial. So fighting is, is questionable. We found a buddy here, let's go check him out. Navigating the gloomy cavern, Ensign Vass comes to an abrupt stop. A motionless figure lays hunched against the rock wall, clad in one of the expedition diving suit. He's not alone. Rushing to the side of his fallen comrade, Vass is relieved to see a small burst of bubbles escaping the exhaust vent of the suit. Out cold perhaps, but breathing. This is Ensign Vass, can you hear me? He can only hope the radio transceivers on both suits are still functional. The moment of silence feels immeasurable long until a faint reply echoes inside his helmet. Ah. Ah, uh, my ear. Copy. Uh, I mean. It's able seaman. Timo. Groggy and confused just as he himself was upon coming to. What's going on? Where am I? Not a lot of answers as of yet. Able Timo. Vass replies, forcing, cal forcing calmness and confidence into his voice. Get up and check your gear. We have a lot to do. On it, boss. Alright, so we got ourselves a buddy. So what's the plan? How are we getting out of this one, Ensign? Just follow me. Follow me and you'll be safe. Sounds like a good deal. Oh, were we supposed to pick up the rope? No, okay, good. Yes, sir. No time to waste. Just what I said. Alright, so let's keep moving. Okay, we're gonna fight this thing. Actually, yeah, we're gonna have to fight it because it's gonna come at us. Now, if we could step in front of our buddy, which we can because he's in the way, we could have stepped into defensive posture, which would allow us to sort of take damage, but we, we don't have the action points anyway, so yeah, okay, multiple enemies, not ideal. Something's moving, but that's alright, we'll, we'll go at them. We're gonna move here, next to this one, and then we're going to use an attack to kill this. We have 82% chance of hitting it. Nice. We insta-killed it. That's great. Now we're gonna move with our other guy here as well and hit again. And we kill them both. Now we should inspect the corpse. You can see, you can inspect things without an action point usually. So you use up your action points to the move but the inspecting is free. The broken jellyfish lies deflated at his feet. Tiny electric discharge is still visible within the pale membrane. Vas is no expert on these creatures, but he knows they don't use electricity to hunt or defend themselves. Entirely new species of Sikafozoa. <laughs> what is that word? <laughs> in a different context, this would be a great biological discovery, but right now, it's only putting him on more edge. These things are weird. Let's just get a move on, okay? We gotta get out of here. Uh, is this scrap? It's a really good thing to try to get scrap. It was not scrap. Okay, never mind. There's a cavern exit here, so we're gonna move out. And then we're gonna move out with our buddy as well. Alright, now we can find some scrap here. You definitely wanna grab it. You're gonna need resources. So, what resources we've got in the game? We've got a void marrow. This thing you use to mutate your crew. Yes, you can mutate your people in this game and you can give them some pretty cool stuff. Like, for example, eating corpses. That is what I did in my test game, because why not? Let's make them eat corpses. That's what I want to hear. <laughs> really? Really? Okay, a, a bussy, but I'm gonna make you eat corpses if that's what you want. Then we've got scrap. This is used to upgrade our submarine, which is gonna, see, which we're gonna see soon. Chemicals also used to repair ship sections, just as much as uh, copper. And then we've got clues, which we already talked about, for upgrading the crew and supplies for healing the crew. Where is my exit? Somewhere here. Gotta get there. Gotta get there with our people. There's something we can check. Yeah, that's copper. We gotta get that copper. Let's start go with Timo, with our seamen, and grab that copper. Yeah, here's the exit, so we're gonna go to USS Salem Anchor. Go. Carefully ascending the sturdy anchor chain, Timo reaches the airlock contraption at the con. The mechanism opens with ease, just like in training. He can't wait to be inside and shed this darn suit. The conning tower is a mess, with mischievous equipment strewn hazardly all around the small room. 
First things first though, the control room. Uh, the able seaman kneels next to the hatch and pulls. The heavy steel door gives way with the tortured creak, revealing an almost still surface of dark water. The ship is flooded. Fanny rears its head within Timo. The asylum is their only way home, his only hope of seeing his family again. But it's too badly damaged to move or even surface. Focus. The sub is floating, which means there's plenty of air inside it somewhere. All they need to do is pump the water out of the flooded section and get the equipment in the control room operational. Easy peasy. He's not going down without a fight. Yup, Timo. Man up. <laughs> let's get this thing fixed. Alright, let's go. Let's go with our divers. USS Salem. Had we succeeded in the mission? Oh, I forgot to take the copper. No, I did, I did take it. Okay. We, we neutralized two of these jellyfish or whatever that was. And we got some clues, scrap matter, and copper. Now here we've got our beautiful submarine. However, it is flooded. Now we need to use our power to pump the water out of the rooms to be able to use it. So we have now discovered our control room, which we need to repair in order to be able to use it. So what the control room does, it enables the use of nutrical charts to launch new missions. So we're going to repair it right now, and then we're going to go to the next mission. The great machine comes alive slowly. Machinery is still locked behind flooded section responding to the call of the control room. The hum and vibration of the engine brings hope, but not as much as the blinking light on radio panel, the emergency beacon locator. Tens of diving suits, each fitted with a transmitter, are missing from their storage. Only one signal is active right now, but perhaps the others are just out of range or temporarily disabled. After the difficult repairs and the hunting emptiness they found on the Salem, it feels good to have a clear way forward. Much remains to be done aboard the ship. Most functions are completely offline and the rest is held together by the power of duct tape and positive thinking. <laughs> To make things more difficult, the wiring manual in the control room maintenance cabinet escaped its waterproof casing. The old girl is going to need some serious dry dock time, if, when, they get home. Now, each of our characters have special class. So there are three classes in total. There is officer, there is um, crewman, and then there is something like a scientist, I think. So the officers, they're good with spear guns and have increased ranged aim. And crewmen are good with melee. And so what we're gonna do now is we're going to first of all assign our inventory. So each person can carry some stuff. We're gonna give here Ensign Vaz some medkit. And we're gonna give Timo, aside from the medkit as he is, we're also going to give him flares, which can give us light and also a shrapnel charge, which will allow us to blow things up if you wanted it. No, no, maybe let's not take the flares. We want to have some space in case we grab something on the way. And then we are going to go on to our next mission. It's going to be this. We gotta find our friend. Oh, another diver. I don't know if they're friends, but presumably they left together on the submarine for a while, so who knows. Also, even if they're enemies, we should still go and find him. We're nice, nice people, okay? Expedition lost. To find out what happened to the rest of the cure, cure, crew, and we can use the sonar. So here we've got a sonar, and we can use special abilities for it. And this is going to sort of blink when it tells us where the objective is. So when you see that the objective is here towards the left, there's also something of interest up here on the left top. So blue is like an air vent, and then friendly is this other green guy, hostile or enemies, and... Uh, Sort of like a blinking blue salvage. So we're gonna go towards the objective, so we gotta go here to the left. Oh, let's go. Oh, actually, there's no way to go this way. Never mind. So we're gonna go upwards and then we're gonna go to the left. Now, here, we're gonna just move ahead and see what we can find. Let's go. Now we're gonna go this way. We gotta go more to the left and then down a little bit. Let's move with our other guy and follow. Also, you wanna keep an eye whether we can see any kind of like copper and things like that. Ooh, this is still not the right way. How are we gonna get. We need to get down here, which presumably means we have to walk around. Yeah, we're gonna have to walk around this, unfortunately. That's the problem if you follow the sonar too closely, you're gonna get stuck. Oh, 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 okay. We've got an enemy. I'm gonna fall back. Hope that it's not gonna have a range to hit me. It's actually leaving, so that's that's not bad for us either. All right. Now, we could use our special skills. We could increase the... 
light, which means it will allow us to see like a bit more on the edge of the screen. For example, see where the enemies are. It could also amplify the signal. So we'll be able to see a bit more about nearby threats and we could also evacuate. Evacuating is really important because that's what's going to allow us to kind of get out of here. Let's go hit this thing. Nice. Insta-kill. That was great. So stay out of my way, you stupid mollus. Agreed. I mean... We tried to run away from it. It tried to run away from us too. Oh no, no. This one is the strange attack. No, okay. This one's slow. Good, 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 good. We can, we can kill them both. It's not stress. Let's walk towards it. Kill it. Right. Deflated for good. Deflated for good. <laughs> Missed the voice on that one. Sometimes it's gonna be difficult to remember which voices I gave to who. How many of them can there be? Plenty, plenty. And and we we gotta still get this way, so we gotta keep moving around. So let's let's move. Let me go down here. Now this thing, this thing doesn't move. But if you kill it, it will hit you back. However, I believe the first time we kill it, it's going to give us... Uh, the first time we destroy it, it's going to give us, I believe, clues. So I am going to... I am going to hit it. So I'm going to go here with... First of all, this guy's going to go and grab my scrap metal. And then... Actually, what we could do... Oh, we could be smart. Let's be smart. What we're going to do is we're going to use our uh, spear gun to hit it from a distance. Let's do it. So I missed that up. Oh, it still hit me even though I was at a distance? Uh, I was gonna be like, I'm gonna be super smart and handle this and you were still too close. We should have taken an extra step back. That's okay. Splayed open. All that remains of the ones bulging pod are the shreds of a thin but tough shell strung between supporting spines. The pressure inside the bizarre coral-like husk must have been immense. Quirk of evolution previously unknown to science or the consequence of some unnatural force. Nobody knows. Let's go here and grab ourselves the supply chest. Yeah, but let's grab the flare because why not? Okay, we can finally start moving towards the target destination. Oh, we've got a thing here. Um. I could get to it, but then I can't hit it, so I'm just gonna move this way. Whoa! Uh, this is... Are they gonna run away from us? Good, that's good, because... We can hit two, but we can't hit three, because for that we need more movement, which we just don't have. Okay. That being said, we're gonna get hit here a little. That's okay. Let's move... Can I move there and use my spear gun? I had to reload it. Oh well. So so this guy's gonna get hit a bit. <laughs> Timo's gonna get hit. Sorry, Timo. It's fine, I can handle Oh three of them now? Come on. They also attacks of opportunity by doing the game, so watch out for that. Let's start with Timo. We're gonna hit this one that's kinda of further away. Oh seriously, you can't hit it? You hit it now. Then we're going to use our spear gun to hit the one at a distance, presumably. And then, that's it, unfortunately. Move closer and use your regular attack. Now I'm gonna be running out of air supply pretty soon. So hopefully we can find some good source of air nearby. That would be nice. Yeah, I can see an air vent's gonna be down there. So let's just keep moving. We're gonna move a little bit faster now. So we wanna go a bit backwards, so a bit to the right again. And then, actually, I think it's probably gonna be... The air vent should be... Yeah, it's there, so we're gonna go this way. And we'll follow up with our friend. Oh, there's scrap here. We're gonna grab the scrap with with Timo, presumably, because, yeah, he needs air. So you just move towards the air vent and grab your air. Don't grab too much, though, because we want to leave some for Timo. Timo's gonna grab the scrap metal first, and then we'll follow up towards the air vent as well. This is, by the way, free, getting up all the air, so that's good. But we still get enough so we can grab it as much as we can. The thing is still straight down. Straight down is our goal, so we're gonna keep moving. No! Oh, I hate these things. So, these things, they're able to shoot from a distance. The cool thing about them is they tend to try to run away, so if you stand right next to them, you can get opportunity attacks, which is what we're gonna do here. Because it's gonna try to run away to be able to hit us, and then in order to do that, we'll get that opportunity attack, which is very nice. 
but now with the other guy we're just gonna move here and we're gonna go into defensive stance which is going to give us protection and it's going to allow us to not take as much damage hopefully they'll hit him and not the other one. Oh come on he's just being mean let's stand here so we'll get an opportunity attack on previously could use the spear gun no we, we wanna we wanna stand next to them we're gonna go here and we'll use a regular attack those attacks of opportunity I think are worth it oh the enemy is disoriented so they cannot attack or use their abilities that's great so they just try to run away for where we could hit them why didn't we hit that guy oh well never mind in that case let's just get out oh we have enemies near so she can't so let's uh, go in defensive stance and with our other guy we're gonna move here and also we can do a defensive stance so we'll just do a regular attack we do have a med kit so we could heal up if we needed to it hit us but that's fine all right now we're going to reload and we're going to use our spear gun on it We missed. This is so irritating. We're so close to like finishing and we gotta just bother with this silly thing. And we get more actions of opportunity. Attacks of opportunity. Everybody keeps gonna keep hitting us unfortunately. Okay now, can we now get out? Enemy's too near now. So let's kill it now once and for all. Great. We also inspect the corpse which we should inspect it. The gone corpse is unlike anything Timo has seen before. Features common to deep sea animals mixed with a frame that is far closer to human than you would care to admit. The size of its eyes explained why the strange beast was so averse to the light of their suit lamps. Compared to the near perfect darkness of its home, their fluorescent bulbs must have seemed like staring into the sun. The arms, weak and decrepit as they are, don't appear to see much use. The simple conclusion is that the spines the creature propelled must be its primary defense as well as a hunting strategy. The simple clothing also implies the use of advanced tools. Timo can help but feel that there is more to these spine skulkers than meets the eye. Well, if they're called spine <laughs> skulkers then definitely. Alright, let's get out of here. Now our objective is on the left top so we gotta get there. Oh, and we've got some scrap here, that's nice. Let's keep moving. I don't want to move too far from my other guy so I'm just gonna like wait somewhere here so you do gotta catch up with him let's go here inside and follow I keep moving we found what is this oh there's an altar here let's check it I'm gonna investigate it Barely audible whispers surround Ensign Vast as he approaches the primitive shrine. In this moment, he might have had a chance to turn away, but reason and bravado override the instinctive response to flee. As a set of red eyes flare open between the torrents, the moment has passed. He's trapped. Do not fear, the voice whispers. I offer much and ask for so little. Vast struggles, but it's as if his suit is lined with lead. There's no escape from red eyes that seem to burrow into his skull. Meet the stare head on. All right, so these are dice. So essentially you can roll the dice and if you don't roll enough, you can re-roll and you can choose any number of dice that you can re-roll unless you get um, A negative side of a die. So where we've got this negative, we can reroll that, but we could reroll these other two things. So we could reroll this and this, and presumably one of those, because I think we can get better than just that. So let's try to reroll these. Okay, so now we've got exactly five, which is just what we needed. So we're gonna hit continue. The horns of the shrine and the crimson disembodied eyes are joined by bright blue lines that form the shape of a bull's head. Can I the voice returns but no longer as a whisper. It roils around Ensign Vas, deep as the ocean and inexplorable as the tides. You have come to a dangerous place. Already you have faced my werewolf children and worse awaits you should continue. 
Vestige of my power still remain. Call to me if you require aid, and I will attempt to twist the fates in your favor. Who are you? Vast demands. What do you want from us? There's no response. The silence of Ains returns, leaving only a tingling at the back of his neck. Someone or something is watching. We gain access to invocations. So invocations are special, like a invocation points essentially that you've got over here and you can use them for special abilities now these are shared between all of your crew members so what can we do we can do providence this is pretty amazing it absorbs the next damage instance from an external source awesome a natural focus obsessed with uh, the perfect strike increase your temporary bonus to aim and the cost of defense then we've got Void Step, which allows you to teleport. And then we've got Solace of the Minds, which allow you to sort of uh, defend against insanity attacks. So the problem is that if you turn insane... Whoa, okay, okay, this is a really big enemy. No, 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 no. It, it missed me. So what we're going to do here is we're gonna actually going to use this Providence to be able to run away from it. Then we're going to check out the fishing net. And we're going to we gotta continue in that direction though. So we're probably going to move away. We'll get an attack of opportunity, but we have the providence, so we don't care. And then with our other character, we're going to use use a spotter on the enemy. Which means that if we kill it, we will gain the action point back. And we will also Go into defensive stance. Actually, maybe that has, I don't know if that was a good decision. Yeah, we get Providence. Oh no, why didn't the Providence work? Okay, that's weird. Okay, we're gonna have to start by hitting this. And then we're gonna use a met kit on himself. And then and we'll use defensive posture this again to defend a bit more against their attacks. Can't really worry about the other enemy. Alright. Weapon special blitz. Debilitating spear. Careful aim that hits each target in its path. Disorientating when dealing 17 to 20 damage. Can I not use that? Nice. That was really good damage. And then let's use a regular attack. We'll also use providence again on this guy in the front. Oh, now we can't use an attack. That's a shame. Okay. All right, I'm gonna use my bass to finish this off. Great, now we got that action point back, so we should be able to inspect this. First glance, the anatomy of the fallen brood defies all reason. The head is similar to that of an orca with a maw of razor sharp teeth. Smooth and rubbery skin also points towards a mammalian nature. The cruel take of Darwinian chance resulted in an ambulatory deep sea creature is beyond his comprehension. But Vas cannot deny that the fiend did indeed walk these desolate pendants. Now large bone hooks on the end of each arm. It's just a description, let's just skip it. Because there are other things I want to show you and we're gonna run out of time if we just keep going slowly. Alright, you need to move towards this thing and you need to start attacking it, otherwise it's going to do damage to us and we don't want that. So let's just move next to it, we'll get that an attack of opportunity which is always good. And then we're gonna save our last crew member and we can get out. Which is important because we're gonna run out of air soon. Let's move this way. We can check our crew member. Oh, not yet. Okay, so we're gonna attack the enemy. I'm gonna try to move here and see if I can use the sp spare gun. Yes. Oh, I missed it. Yes, it's dead now. Good. Now, Timo's going to check this one. Able Timo reaches the unmoving form lying prone on the thin layer of sand covering the bottom of this ear cavern. He rushes in to check the suit. Thankfully, it appears undamaged and sealed. The facial port is fucked over, concealing the crew member within. An auspicious sign, sign for the helmet of a diseased the diver would carry no pale covering of mist. Timo is anxious to find who he has found, but 
Death will have to wait until he can rouse them. He peers into the tenebrous dark beyond and chills runs down his spine. Timo hopes that some of the questions that have plagued the survivors will finally be answered. Of course, even just recovering another one of the far too many presumed dead in the incident would be more than he could ever dare to hope for. Snapping out of it, Timo realizes there's no time to waste. Breathing or not, the incapacitated figure may need medical attention and his own tank is running lower with every breath. He holds his breath as he shakes the suit gently. Seconds feel like hours until the other diver responds. Uh, Timo backs off, oh, 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 go back up, allowing them to come to terms with their surroundings and situation without risking a potentially dangerous collision. Soon a crackle on the comms channel announces that the unknown crew member has activated the radio. Where am I? Can anyone hear me? Rudy chokes back tears of relief and activates his comp. Who is Bale? Is that a new character? Is that one of our guys? A long story, but also it's good to hear your voice. I, th I think it's the the Freeman? Or we'll just say Bale. A glimmer of hopeless despairs. Maybe there's hope for them yet. What happened, Bale? Do you have any idea where you are or how you got here? Primo, is that you? The voice of the science officer is weak, though she's trying to mask her fear and confusion. Timo can tell the Oriole has taken the toll. Oh, so Bale's a woman. Okay, so this is gonna be Zemkat after one of my patrons. Zemkat continues. I know if I've got the answers you want. It's all jumbled up the dreams. Timo, the dreams. I feel like I dreamt a thousand lives and interconnected and unique, which purpose beyond any I've known in this dreary existence, and now it's all slipping away. Timo gives her a moment. While the science officer was speaking, he checked the meter on their oxygen tank. Inexplicably, it is completely full. I don't even remember how I got in the suit. The captain was there, walking in front of me, guiding me through the weeds and runes. We were not alone in the oppressive gloom. Shadows lurk at the edge of the lamplight. Timo shapes not of this world. Oh dear god, why must the splendor and grace of my dreams fade and this horrid memory remain? She's visibly agitated now, the shaking of her arms clearly noticeable even with the bulk of the suit. Timo reaches out to grab the shoulder of the science officer and the contact removes of this appears to bring some relief to his bewildered companion. They let us path onwards we continue, our destination apparently clear to Captain Ashworth. For he strode on with the determination and purpose of a man who knows his path. Without warning, the captain stopped. There were large rocks around us and a dark yawning chasm in the silt. Turn around, then it was him, but it also wasn't. The loathsome face I saw haunts me still, staring at me with clear, gleaming eyes. Something moved behind me, the captain must have seen, but did nothing to stop it or to warn me. Tried to pull my knife and an impossibly strong grip pinned my arms. Just stood there. How could he just stand there? Timo sits in stunned silence for a moment. Somehow, despite all the unimaginable horrors he has witnessed in these accursed steps, the thought of great Captain Ashford abandoning his crew is too much. His deliberation complete, Timo speaks with calm conviction. We have to find him. We have to find out the truth. Alright, now we get a run to evacuate. We can only evacuate if we are outside of a cave. So we get to essentially run with everybody and hope that we do not lose our air before we run out of the cave. But we should be able to handle it. I think I think we can handle it. Let's just like run with everything we've got. We'll keep running out of the cave. Yeah, we're almost there. We can do it. So we found a new crew member. We've got three people now. And in the in the next mission, we'll be able to do the mutations. But I don't know if we have enough time in this episode for it, so we'll probably do it in the next one. Let me know if you'd like to see that, or you could also play it on seventh of October and check it out yourself. All right, so we gotta get out, which we can do right now. And then where's my last person? You, get out, please. And then out here, we can just click on evacuation. We're gonna place the evacuation over all of them. So that's here. And then we'll click evacuate. If you don't have enough action points, I need to wait for the next turn. Or can I not click it? No, oh, okay. And then we can evacuate next one, so it's not really a problem. And right, we've gained a corruption level. The track can be found over here. The abyss grows more dangerous with each corruption level. So essentially it means that you can like daily around too long. I mean, we had to fight the combat. Come on, game. Don't be mean to us. We, we fought a lot of people. Probably more than we should, but that's alright. 
Tide crew return to the control room of the asylum having shed their diving suits. As they descend the ladder, a meek voice calls out from beneath. Uh, oof, welcome back, guys. Standing near the controls is Rodney Black, one of the ship's cooks. He looks haggard but alive. He continues, Sorry I didn't speak up sooner. I came to inside one of the darn storage lockers just as we were heading out, and I wasn't myself for a bit there. Oh boy, I had some strange names, let me tell you. Black is clearly still a bit out of it, but it's good to have another member of the expedition back. Instead of calling him Black, I shall call him Robert. Alright, so. Yeah, I think this is a good time to end the episode. Let me know if you'd like another one. Oh no, actually, no, 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 no. We are going to do a level up. So we could level up uh, our main guy, so Bass. And we could give him either the commander ability... Uh, sorry, not him, but uh, yeah, either the commander ability. This will allow us to give an action point to another diver and this one. I'm not sure if it's and this one or if it just means that another driver could also be this one. Or explosive expert, which allows us to do pretty high damage. Ooh, to initial target, the cluster bombs attach to the spear and break off and deal further 30 to 36 damage to the initial target and all targets adjacent to it. That's a really, really good damage. Let's grab that. I want that. Could also increase his agility, insight, strength, or endurance. Let's do strength. And then here, Timo is going to gain either goon. There's two ways to fight the fairway and the right way. Cheap shot. Carefully placed blow at exposed tendons, disorienting the target for a turn, causing them to bleed for three turns. Or... Marine. Immunity to physical debuffs and armor increased by 5 for 3 turns. I'm gonna grab the goon. And we'll also increase his health, I think. So his strength. Alright, I think it's a good time to end the episode. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, run on the comments and you can click on the right to watch some other games from Slytherin. I'll see you there. Bye bye!